Amen. Shall we together lift up our two hands to heaven, everybody, and give God thanks tonight for answered prayers. Give him thanks for the amazing testimonies we heard. Give him thanks for what he's got in stock for you for the month of February. Would you give him thanks? Give him thanks and do that in words. God is waiting to hear from you. He's waiting to hear from me. Jesus, I thank you tonight. I thank you tonight. Jesus, I thank you tonight for answers to my prayers and I thank you tonight for the testimonies you cause my ears to hear from time to time. I give you glory. I give you praise. There is no one like you. Now ask him to speak to you tonight. Jesus, speak to me tonight. Let your word gain an entrance to my heart tonight. Grant me a turnaround by my encounter with your word tonight. Now pray. Ask him to do that. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Lord Jesus, thank you tonight. Thank you for answers to our prayers all the day. Thank you for the testimonies we hear from time to time. Thank you for the ones tonight. Receive our thanks in the name of Jesus. Now by your word, open a new chapter to everyone's life. Thank you for it. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. It's my new dawn era. Give the Lord a big hand and get seated. The prophetic focus for the month is gateways to realms of noiseless breakthroughs. Gateway to realms of noiseless breakthroughs. And what we've been looking at, we started yesterday, is... Um, our midweek services unveiling the wonders in the world. This book is pregnant with wonders. But why are we largely in want? Why are we largely in want? If this book is full of wonders. We discover from scriptures that the Bible unleashes its wonders through its instructions. Instructions. It's a manual, and what a manual does is to offer valuable instructions in maximizing the benefits of any equipment. It shows you what to do how to do it so you can get the best out of your piece of equipment. I once stated here that the Bible is made up of 75 instructions, 75% of instructions and 25% of principles. 75% of instructions. In 2 Corinthians, 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16 and 17, all scripture is given by the inspiration of God and it's profitable for doctrines. Its principles are profitable. Its reproofs are profitable. Its corrections are profitable. Its instructions are profitable. Now, if you add reproof plus correction plus instruction, they are, cannot be summarized as instructions. This is the way to go. Your opinions not withstanding. We don't fly by principles, we fly by instructions. Professors in uh, aviation schools are called instructors. 
They are called instructors because your opinions are irrelevant. If you must fly, these are the protocols. And they have what they call a checklist. Checklist, you must go through it for every flight. Either the co-pilot, the captain is reading, you know, and say, check, 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 check. Otherwise, you are down. We walk by common sense. You don't go to school to walk. You just get born, and then when it's time, you start uh, sitting, and then you start crawling, and then you start walking. There is no training for it. Praise God. And we're wrong by principles. First, where you are going is a principle. Don't look back when you are running away from danger. It's a principle. Right? But we fly by instructions. The reason why there are very few flyers today is that people hate instructions. I'm a man of mine. They can't tell me the way. No, 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 no. That cannot be the only way to do it. I don't agree with that. Now, you see, if you don't agree with the instructions for a flight, you have crashed. You just tell them where you want to be buried when you return. Now, when they bring me back, I want to bury me at this point, this area. Don't let it touch that flower on. Your opinions are irrelevant. My opinions are irrelevant. Blessed is the man that walking on the council of the ungodly. No, I don't believe that. Don't believe it. You see, Pepe. Nor sit in the seat of discomfort. Are you going to church again? Yeah, yeah, people. They're not deceiving all of you. You are sitting down there. Nor stand in the way of sinners. But whose delight is the love of his God? And upon it, he taught me until the night. Whatever he doeth, he shall prosper. That is, if you want to prosper, these are the instructions of what to stay away from if you must prosper. I don't believe that. I mean, I've been, been friends all along. That is on drugs, doesn't mean anything. I mean, you will soon become drug, not just on drug. If you don't check out on time. They are all fundamental instructions that are ordained to give us the best in life. He said, take fast hold of instructions. Let her not go. Proverbs 4, 13. Keep her, for she is thy life. So, the prophets of scriptures is in complying with the instructions they are in. Instructions they are in. Whatever he tells you to do, do it, and then you see his wonders. And so you find them saying his wonders all through scriptures. Now, go to Jordan, dip yourself seven times. And he went deep first time, okay. Second time, okay. He checked his body. The leprosy was getting thicker. They did third time, fourth time, fifth time, but by the seventh time, he was, his body was born again. Is flesh as fresh as that of a child. By taking fast hold of instruction. He said to me, seven, I'm only five. You can mock me if you want. I'm going back there. Boom. By the seventh time, everything turned. Take fast hold of instructions. Let her not go. Keep her, for she is thy life. She is thy life. Now, let's look at the wonders of right association. Why must I be right with the people I work with, the people I relate with, people I call my friends? So it's about the wonders of right association. What is innate for me? In Proverbs chapter 13 and verse 20. They that walk or he that walketh with the wise men 
or with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. So it's not about I don't like it. I mean, I'm just a, a, I'm a man of the people. I, I, everybody. A companion of fools shall be destroyed. In Second Corinthians chapter six verse fourteen, it said, "Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers." What fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion has light with darkness? Caution. Caution. It's a risk. Wrong association can be most devastating. You saw it. There were three men, Data, Korah, and Abraham, and the fourth person. And they took 250 other men with them. They crashed under the rebellion of four people, 250 others. None of them escaped. None of them. Numbers chapter 16, verse 1 to 4, and verse 30 to 33. The earth opened and swallowed them up, all their family members, by joining association, by joining hands with the rebellious. You can't tell how many great destinies have been massacred. You can't. Not by any sin of their own, but by their wrong association with evil men. In my place, when you are traveling in the morning, they pray over you that you won't travel with Lodi Buruku this morning. Because you travel with somebody that carries a spell, the spell affects you. If it's a spell of accident, you are involved in it together. Be not deceived. No matter the anointing, evil communication corrupts good manners. Don't be deceived no matter the grace of God at work on your life. 1 Corinthians 15.33 Evil communication has the capacity to corrupt and bring any great destiny down. Caution. 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 No matter how anointed, no matter how much insight, no matter how strong a man is in the faith, evil communication can corrupt his destiny. Don't be deceived. We had this young man by name Amnon. Amnon happened to be the son of David, one of the heirs to the throne. And Amnon had a friend, Second Samuel chapter 13, verse 1 to 20. They called this friend Jonadab. Jonadab was a son of Belial. He was an area boy. He had all evil schemes in his hand. He led Amnon to the grave. He led Amnon to the grave. Somehow, it is cheaper for anyone on the floor to pull you down than you have the opportunity to pull him up. He has gravity on his side. So if somebody's walking down here and you're holding hand with him, he can decide any time to bring you down. By one jack, you are down. But to take him up, it's a lot of effort. If he said no, he would drop. But to put you down, it's no task. It's no task. You can't walk about with a smoker and not smoke cigarette. It's a matter of time. You first start smelling cigarette. Then you start enjoying it. Once you start smoking it. No destiny here will crash. Yeah. This is the instruction from the manual. And the Bible is God's manual for maximize destiny. You want to make the most of life, hearken to the instructions of the Lord 
as contained in the book. Judas was no doubt spending time with the people who want to kill Jesus. After they are finished eating, and the master said, oh, okay, you guys go take some rest. He said, okay, oh master, I just go out. I want to feel what the outside looks like. Oh boy, come. We want to kill your master. Well, if you have the money. He negotiated the sale of his master. He, he wasn't meeting them for the first time. He was stealing time to be with them. They corrupted his mentality. Till he sold his master and ended in suicide. Somebody living with Jesus. They, they were not workers. They were members of his household. They were living with him. Mark chapter 3 verse 14. He chose 12 that they might be with him and they might send them forth. So, it doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter the church you go. It doesn't matter where you live. Wrong association will corrupt any great destiny. You know what keeps people on drugs on? Their colleagues call them when they don't see them. Hey, what's going on? You ought to be over here one hour ago. What's happening? You don't have any cash. No, no, no. We assist you. I mean, you know, you're a good guy. You're a good guy. We assist you. You need some shots tonight, you know. If you go down, things will go down for you. They call him and like him. No one here will fall a victim of a wrong association. No one here will ever fall a victim of a wrong association. But right association on the other side is a great asset to any life. There wasn't anything about Lot. He only went with Abraham. Genesis chapter 13 verse 5. And Lot also which went with Abraham had flocks and herds and tents. He went with, he was in a company with a covenant man and the blessings of the covenant began to rub off on him. He went with, may you go with the right people. 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 Yeah. Laban testified in Genesis chapter 30 and verse 27. He said, I have learned by experience that the Lord has blessed me for thy sake. Laban had the privilege of having Jacob with him, a covenant man. And that imparted on his business supernaturally. He said, please stay. How will I survive if you go? That association led to his financial promotion. He wanted it by all means. He enjoyed it for a long time. May you begin to have positive experiences from now. Yeah. Let me hear your loudest amen. Yeah. You don't have a spare life. You have only one life. It's appointed unto man wants to die. And after that, the judgment. Don't toy with it. Your life and my life is so precious in the sight of God. He sent his son to redeem us. We can't play careless in the name of association with anybody. Let's come awake. All the disciples of Jesus enjoy supernatural covering and blessings and breakthroughs by being around with Jesus. When I sent you the other time without gold or without uh, money or script, did you lack anything? They said nothing. All the seven devils are subject to your name. That association robbed on them so massively. They took knowledge of them that have been with Christ. They began to speak like king with authority. That's the way it works. Right association 
is forever a plus to any destiny. Is forever a plus to any destiny. Is forever a plus to any destiny. May the plus of right association begin to manifest in your life from today. Amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. He that walks with the wise shall be wise. A companion of fools shall be destroyed. Somebody has said, you'll be the same that you are today in five years' time, except for two things. The books you read and the people with whom you walk. Those are the forces that help to change your levels. Change your way upward. The books you read that is people you learn from are the people with whom you walk. There are books you will read today that are Christian books. You won't speak in tongues forever. That will be the end. You'll just be stranded because you have been learning from wrong sources. And so instead of being motivated, you have been demotivated. I've tried to identify three levels of association here. One, your work with God. It imparts grace for greatness. It's the most high God. Nothing is too hard for him. With man, this is impossible. No, with God, for with God, all things are possible. A quality work with God guarantees a great future. God said to Abraham, Work with me and watch what I do with your life. When Abraham was 90 years old and nine, the Lord appeared to him and said, I'm the almighty God. Walk before me. That means walk with me and be thou perfect. Just engage in the quality. Walk with me. And what, how, watch how that will impact supernaturally on your life. Walk with me. Genesis 17.1 And we walk with him by faith. Believing everything he says. And proving you do. By doing so. For by faith we walk with God. And not by sight. Second Corinthians chapter 5. And verse 7. By faith we walk with God. And not by sight. And you know two cannot walk together. said they be agreed. So. Be in agreement with God. Let the dictate of his word rule your life. And then you have secured your future. You have secured posterity. Generations yet unborn in your lineage. We begin to draw on the quality of your work with God. Abraham showed it. Hearken unto me, O ye that love righteousness. Look to Abraham, your father, and so that be I called him alone, and I blessed him. For the Lord shall bless Zion. Amen. You know, Zion is the bad place of giants. The end time giants, whether the devil likes it or not, end time giants will be born in Zion. Psalm 87, verse 1 to 7. Or all the springs of life shall be domiciled in Zion. But who are going to be part of it? Those that engage in a quality work with God. They are naturally, delightsomely, excitedly in agreement with God on all counts. 
They are just in agreement with God. They don't have their own opinion. God, you say it is over. Your word is final. Now let's go. Amos chapter 3 verse 3. Can two work together? He said they be agreed. So we can't work with God except we are genuinely in agreement with his word on all areas of, your, of our life where we want to see him manifest himself. So it's not I love you, Jesus. No, 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 no. Be in agreement with his word. And he told you we'll be working together. And if God be for you, who can be against him? Number two, association I've tried to put together here is work with the giants. Work with the giants. Hebrews chapter 6 verse 12. Don't be slothful, but followers of those who through faith and patience inherit the promise. Work with the giants is the only way to emerge the next. Work with the giants with all zeal and zest. Follow the steps of the giants or you never emerge one. Be followers of them who through faith and patience obtain the promise. Now, in Jeremiah chapter 6 and verse 16, he says, stand in the way and see and ask for the old path. Where is the good way? We are in our father's throne and walk in it and you shall find rest for your souls. But he said, we will not walk there. And it's a new age. We have left that realm. We have, I mean, the world has gone past that God, in case you don't know. We won't walk there. And this is too old a thing to follow. And so they start falling apart. Things start falling apart for them. He said, I've sent you watchmen. They hearken to the voice of the trumpet. They say, we will not hearken. Now, look at the next verse. Verse 18. He said, verse 18 of it. He said, therefore, hear ye nations, and know, O congregation, what is among you, among them. Hear, O heart, behold, I will bring evil upon these people. You can't. Look. It's who you follow that determines what follows you. You can't imagine a sports star without following the dictates of your coach. You can't coach yourself to imagine a star. So it's time. I value all levels of relationship, but I value the relationships of one, the most high, two, the ones that are higher than me, and there will always be people that are higher than you. Amen. It's not by your physical body, it's not by your accomplishment. There is nothing new under the sun. I have taken much more delight in working with those that are above me so I can draw from them. What you enjoy in walking or following the footsteps of science, you are drawing the grace that made them. Not just the light, but the spirit. Not just knowing what they did, but the spirit behind they are doing it. Can I hear your amen? And then level number three here are those your peers with whom you share. Your peers with whom you share. For woe unto him that is alone. When he's falling, there'll be nobody here to take it, to lift him up. When it's cold, there's no one here to warm him up. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 9 to 12. So we need companionship with our peers. So we can stand there to encourage one another. We can share each one's insight to enhance our rate of accomplishment. And then of course, which is a sign of our meekness and humility is relating with the upcoming ones in our field. Relating with the upcoming ones in our field. There we give out. With our peers we share. With our superiors we draw. 
And from heaven, we tap into grace. The grace that makes great comes from God. The inspiration that causes a man to change levels comes from our superiors. And we share issues with our peers so we can find our way out. And when one is falling, the other one says, no, 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 you don't have to get up here. So these four levels, I've tried to make it four. These four levels, I think I did that in towards excellence in life and ministry. These four levels will keep you sane and sound. Sane and sound. Because every good thing you do, the same you shall receive from the Lord. What you give out is what the time is, what comes down from above. You give out and then you draw. You give out. So the quality of what you release is what the time is the quality of what you draw. So you give out and then you enjoy a release of grace. These are clean cut instructions. Please mind them. Wrong with them. Work with them. Live with them. Wrong association will wreck any destiny, any day, any time, anywhere. There are people that will come into your business and before you know what is happening, all your investment of many years is gone. There are those who may preach on your pulpit as a pastor and they will root out every good seed you have planted all your life. Let's be sober. Let's be diligent. The enemy is vigilant. The enemy is looking for who to devour. He won't devour you. He won't devour you. He won't devour you. You can pray somebody of your life. Enough is enough. The good news is this. God has ordained you one of his end time giants. You will not crash. You shall not crash. You shall not crash. You shall not crash. Now be careful with anyone that has no taste for spiritual things. Be careful. He will drain you of your spirituality in no time. Be careful. Because of somebody who is wary about your praying. This prayer is getting too much. What is the matter? Did you kill somebody? Help them. You are carrying Bible about. Okay, stop carrying Bible. Just take your iPad so nobody will know. You are praying and it's knocking. This is how you pray. I'm the one calling you now. And you say you are not hearing. Why you are praying? And then you stand up. You greet him. No. Forever don't cross here. In your life. How did I come across you? How did I ever meet you? Lord. How did I get there? Please forgive me. Man. Forever. Is the way to secure your life. Otherwise. You sell off your destiny before you know. To good human relations. You better maintain a good God relations. That is where the answer to your questions are. Tonight, my prayer is that no one here will fall a victim. No one here will fall a victim. Before you know what is happening, okay, okay, what do you want? You are earning a good pay, you are sending your children to school. What exactly are you looking for? Abraham never had a child with nobody. Otherwise, what is 75 year old looking for? No, God told me he has a great plan for me. And for that plan to come true, I must leave your midst. To a land that will show me, ah, your head has turned down. A land he will show you at this age, you can't ask him, where is the land? He said, that's not your business. Abraham packed his luggage and left. See the greatness of one's obedience today. My prayer is this. Anyone that will turn your life upside down and make it meaningless, may the Lord deliver you from him. one that may destroy the destiny of your children. May the Lord remove them far from you. 
Anyone that may aim at making your life meaningless and valueless, may you be free from their traps. <laughs> Lift up your right hand where you are seated and receive grace from God to keep this instruction with all passion. Jesus, you are my reason for living. Whatever you say is final. Today, I'm delivered from the trap of wrong association at all levels. Wrong association at all levels. I'm delivered today from the plague, the torment, the torture of wrong association from this hour. I'm delivered today. Lord, thank you for setting me free. Take all the glory. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. I once noted, it's better to walk alone than to walk with men of unlike mind. Only fools walk with people with whom they are not in agreement. You'll be tensed up every step of the journey. Friendship is not by force, it is by choice. Friendship is not by force, it is by choice. May you keep making the right choice from now. Yeah. Let me hear your loudest, amen. Yeah. If you are here in this service this evening and you are not born again yet, I'd like to give you this opportunity to connect with Jesus. And enjoy redemptive dignity on this earth and eternity with Christ in heaven. You want your sins forgiven. You want to become a new creature. So all things will pass away and all things will become new. Wherever you are, please turn to your feet and I'll pray with you. This is your chance for a change of story. God bless you. God bless you. You want to surrender your life to Christ today and be born again. Become a new creature. That old things will pass away and nothing will become new. Please stand to your feet. Jesus loves you. Stand to your feet. This is your chance for a change of story. Now, there are also people here tonight that need to rededicate their life to, to Jesus. You want to rededicate your life to Jesus this evening? Would you please stand to your feet also? And I'll pray with you. You want to reconnect back to God? Please stand to your feet. Wherever you are tonight, God bless you. Stand to your feet. You want to rededicate your life to Jesus? No more one leg in and one leg out. You want to be all leg in. Please stand to your feet. Jesus loves you. Glory to God. This applies to all of us in the viewing centers, across the various Zona Fellowship Centers in Lagos and Nota. Everybody that wants to rededicate his or her life to Jesus, please stand to your feet. Partial connection will always lead to frustration. Please, please reconnect. Reconnect. You have the, you have the right to make that choice. Reconnect back to God. Now, all of us who are standing both in the first and second call, can I request that you please make your way straight on here to the altar area where you'll be praying for. Let's give the Lord a big hand of praise. Where you are seated, if there is any association you don't want, now, this can go on by prayer and fasting. We are in a fast today. Lift up your right hand where you are seated and begin to ask the Lord to destroy that task. To destroy that siege. Whatever association is not profitable to you now. Call for its destruction. Call for a total separation. Now pray. Pray. Lift up your right hand and pray that prayer. Wherever you are, lift up your right hand and pray that prayer. I must be free. I'm free finally. My destiny is precious to me. I won't sell for a muscle of me. I'm free tonight. I'm free forever. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' precious name. Everyone in front, please lift up your right hand and bow your heads for prayers. And pray this prayer of faith after me. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I surrender my life to you tonight. Forgive me all my sins. Wash me with your precious blood. I believe you died for me. On the third day, you rose again that I might be justified. Right now, I believe my sins are forgiven. I'm justified by your blood. I'm saved. I'm restored. I'm born again. I'm not a child of God. I am free from the power of sin to serve the living God. 
Thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul. Amen. Keep your hands up. In the name of Jesus, be blessed of the Lord. I cover each of you tonight with the precious blood of Jesus. The enemy shall not pry into your liberty again. The grace that brought you on tonight will keep you there forever. You will make it straight to the streets of glory. You will live a triumphant life on the earth. In the name of Jesus, so shall it be. Now, it's a brand new life for you. It's a brand new day on your life. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. Congratulations. Please help me walk through this door with the officials. You submit your cards and then we'll be praying with you. Shall we all rise? Praise God. Peter and John went together in the hour of prayer to the temple. You need someone who will go together with you to God. And Peter and John went up together. You need somebody. They'll be going up together with you. You always go up with God. You don't go down. Peter and James, when well, Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the night hour. You need people you can agree with spiritually in your life. It will give you double speed. It will give you the speed of light. You just need someone. Glory to God. Lift up those two hands to heaven. And ask God for grace to keep healthy relationship all the days of your life. Profitable relationship. Energizing relationship. Upgrading relationship. Not walking about with gossips and scorners. Not walking about with people that have no value for God or His word. People that will help steer your spirit up all the time to be what God wants you to be, to be what God wants you to be. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. I told one of my very close persons in ministry today. I said, you know what I've enjoyed most? I've enjoyed hanging around the great. So I could draw all drawables. And I'm blessed I've not been disappointed. It is pride that makes anybody think there's no one to draw from. It's pride. And what a plague on our part of the country. Part of the world. A man may greet you ten times. It doesn't mean he's drawing anything from you. No. It takes a meek spirit. Lord, endure me afresh with a meek spirit so I can draw all drawables from every source available around my life. Go ahead and pray. A teachable spirit. The learner spirit. The Lana spirit. Remember our largeness or enlargement in the world is a function of our meekness. Blessed are the made they shall inherit the earth. Let the stewards please take their positions right now to serve the table. Lord, endure me afresh. With a meek and quiet spirit. To locate those that you have put around me. To inspire me to be my best for God. Thank you Jesus. In Jesus precious name we have prayed. In the name of Jesus we have prayed. Well, as we partake of this communion today. Every trace of pride will be destroyed in everyone's life.
Come and learn of me, Jesus said. For I am meek and lowly in heart. You shall find rest for your soul. I can on my own self do nothing. What? As I hear from my father, so I judge. And my judgment is true. You are going somewhere. As the Lord liveth, what eyes have not seen, nor ears heard, nor has ever entered the heart of man, shall become the order of the day in your life. No one will be trapped in a wrong association again. No destiny here will ever crash. In the name of Jesus. Now, Father, we declare this table as the flesh and the blood of your son Jesus. We partake of this today with a desire that by this mystery we'll be empowered to live like you. Amen. Lord, empower each one of us in this service tonight, both here in Canaan Land and all the Vincent centers, to live like you. Amen. To live like you. Amen. Let it be, Lord, Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. To walk in meekness like you. Amen. To walk in obedience like you. Amen. To respond to instructions like you. Amen. Let it be, Lord, in Jesus' precious name. Should any carry any sickness or disease or poison in his or her body, by this communion tonight, I command your instant liberty. Everything that is contrary to your well-being is caused by the power of the blood tonight. Now you're walking from here a free man and a free woman. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Please get seated and with faith approach this table of the Lord and then make declarations on what you have received in return for your faith. Thank you, Lord.